Everybody, welcome back to another 3D Hangout. I'm Noah, designer here at Adafruit. I'm very overblown today. Joining me every week is my brother Pedro. What's up, man? What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro West, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Oh, yeah, this is a show we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. <laughs> is that good? That's pretty good. All right, cool. Every week we have a coupon code for you guys. Let's pay some bills. Coupon code. UV Cleaner will get you 10% off your order. If you order anything from the shop today, it is good until 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And this works on electronics, printers, filament, everything except gift certificates, subscriptions, and... Digital goods. Yeah, digital goods. Cool. Gift certificates. And if you folks spend over $200 or more in the shop, we have a nice special deal with uh, UPS Ground Service. You can get free shipping on your order for orders over $200. And that's only for U.S. continental stuff, so apologize to those outside of the U.S. We also have this cool deal for the folks in New York City. It's called same-day delivery. That means if you order something before noon, you can get it delivered within the same day. I think it's an option, right? It's one of those option things you can Yeah, I think it's actually before 11, you'll get it in by like 5 p.m. Okay, before 11. Cool. And we have that uh, Adafruit Daily is our daily dose of Adafruit stuff. We have a newsletter, different categories. You have to opt into it. We don't spam or anything like that, so that's about it. Check it out if you want to get some quick tips and tricks on 3D printing, electronics, biohacking, maker business. maker business. There's a bunch of categories. Yeah, I like maker business because it's cool. Alrighty, well, we're going to start off with Woody prototyping and do a quick shout out to all the folks in the chat room. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, yeah. This is a special edition because we actually have a special guest, Simon Fontana will be joining us at the end of the show for the QA and the Community to Make segment. Uh, he's probably in the chat room too, so say hi to Simon. And I guess we'll start with uh, this week's project that we're prototyping. So you got a hammer this I week. I got a hammer, yeah. That's my Fix-It Felix hammer. Uh, I got inspired by Kirby G, who's in the chat room. He uh, put together an Instructables and how he uh, how he put together a costume for Halloween, for last year's Halloween. He, came, he went as a Fix-It Felix Jr. from the Disney movie, not Pixar, I thought it was Pixar, the Disney movie, Wreck-It Ralph. And uh, he 3D printed uh, the hammer. It was uh, designed by somebody on Thingiverse. And I was like, man, I gotta add some sound effects to this. So I, add, I added sound effects to it. And it has a speaker, uh, an Adafruit uh, mini sound effects board an amplifier, and a pretty beefy battery, and a button. So what, what happens when you push the button, Pedro? <laughs> push it again. I can it. I'm going to wreck it. <laughs> no, this is really cool. So It's really so loud. loud. <laughs> yeah. So the cool thing is that with the, um, the mini soundboard, it, it requires no programming. So you can plug it into your computer via USB, and it shows up like a memory stick. So you can throw in all sorts of sound effects. And there's different trigger methods. So you can trigger multiple sound effects uh, or an array of sound effects with one button, which is I have here. So I just named the file the special way, and it'll, it'll cycle through different uh, sound effects. So I have like five or so. So that's really cool. So that's going to be next week's project. We bumped it up for next week because Halloween is, is basically always yeah. over. It, it's, it's like over. It's here, yeah. yeah it's here. It, it, one more week and you won't be able to plan because it's just too short. <laughs> and what does this comment say? Fix it. Didn't fix it as fast as you can. Use the magic hammer you got from your old man. Oh, yeah, it's a song. song. That's <laughs> At the end, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So we'll talk about how you put this together. I really like the way that you used uh, the threads to connect everything together. Yeah. And, um, of course, all snapped together parts. Yep. Um, can print in pieces, so it should be able to fit on a lot of the smaller printers. Yeah. We'll take a look at that next week. And uh, you got your costume in, so you'll be dressing up as, <laughs> as, as Felix. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Cool. 
All right. Well, did you want to show your, your project that this this week? Yeah, go over to the um, learning guide this week's project. Coupon learning code guide. is UV printing because of the UV cleaner that we released this week. This is this has stirred lots of uh, comments on whether or not uh, UV LEDs can sanitize and kill bacteria. So we made sure to research this before we went and said that because we wanted like miss. Whatever, and some folks just don't believe it. It's like they must not believe we landed on the moon either. Huh? I know. I think the next thing we have to do is actually take a petri dish and yeah. like shine some UVs on it, see if it actually kills it or not. But in any case, it does have a fan on there, so it is able to clean either your toothbrush or your makeup brushes a lot more faster than having them um, air dry outside. Yeah. So, wife is happy, and that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, no, she wanted this. She said because because it was a Kickstarter project, they didn't make it, and the, the the idea was pretty much similar to this, but it was a little bit more different. It was like a fridge and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But this uh, is designed with some problems in mind. So mm -hmm. one of those problems you solved with dual extrusion using different materials. So uh, dual extruded. Um, a, brush attachments is what we call them. Yeah, so one of the problems is that a lot of the makeup brushes that Brandy uses are dual tipped, which means they have bristles on both ends. Yeah. So putting those inside of like, you know, any brush holder would be a little bit difficult because you would damage the bristle putting them inside. Yeah. So you can slide them in there. So like you were saying, it is a dual print. We have Ninja Flex for the little flaps here and PLA on the outer ring here that's holding everything together. And the cool thing about this is that using the BCN 3D um, printer from Sigma, we're able to use two different nozzles at the same time. So for all the detail that we have on the little flat, uh, flaps here, we're using the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and then to have a nice strengthened um, outer ring without having you know the the uh, nozzle like do the little zigzag thing, we're using a to 0.6 fill it in. yeah a 0.6 millimeter nozzle for that, so it has a nice structural. So it's just um, perimeters. The perimeters oh, cool. on the side there, yeah. Uh, we can there you this, go. Yeah. So the brushes go in from the side, they clamp on there, and the offsets for that is, I think, 0.4 millimeters, so that the layers Offset? stack on top of each oh, other. Oh, okay. Like that, because, I mean, we say that you could try to print this um, as two separate pieces, but in reality, it might fall apart um, if you don't have a dual extruded uh, model or abilities because it can, you know, sort of come off if it's not, you know, layered sandwiched on top of each other okay. like that. So Yeah, the other alternative is the silicone based adhesive like E6000 that might work, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit uh, messy. It could be messy yeah. anyway. So yeah. Yep. Good we job. We've already project. Bri Bri uh, branded in here saying not to be negative, but no germicidal effects. Again, my wife is happy that she can dry her brushes in a, you know, in a nice amount of time. So it doesn't even matter, so. Oh, the, the, the bacteria? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you have dual extruded model and the uh, supports that we use for having the, uh, the little holder on top, if you scroll up just a little bit, you can see that um, the settings that I used on there were, was a 0.3 millimeter vertical offset for having supports on there. Oh, this one? Uh, yeah, so okay. you have to make sure that those are set that way. Otherwise, it is going to sort of fuse into the model, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to release. So you definitely want to check out to make sure that the default support uh, material settings are um, matched pretty closely to what we have here. OK, and if you don't have this option, does other slices have this option? Uh, I, I think Cura should have the ability to... Is it called something else? Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. If somebody in the chat knows what the similar um, support settings for that in Cura is, uh, please let us know. We'll put it inside the guide. Um, we're just familiar with the Simplify 3D. I, I think of it as an air gap, the distance between your support and your actual part, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. You know, a lot of times when you roll over a, a setting, it'll tell you what it is, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. Yeah. So definitely check it out if you want to dry your brushes faster. It looks like we have to remove the UV part because uh, unfortunately we don't not understand science, says Brian. Yeah. Brandon. <laughs> uh, we don't. We, sorry, we're not here for science. We're here yeah, for we're, we're here to please. Um, or at the least, this project was to please my wife, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, right, that goal was solved. All right, cool. <laughs> That's all that matters. No, it's cool. Point. It's a good. It's a good use of. Um, 3D printing. Yes. Uh, it's very utilitarian. It's a thing that's useful. You know, my hammer is useful, but it's not going to 
It's not going <laughs> to dry your brushes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, so thanks. Check that out if you have, um, especially since uh, solving the part of uh, having dual tipped uh, brushes. Yeah, I like on that. Well. I like projects that utilize dual extrusion for not just aesthetics, but for functionality wise. Yeah. You need something rigid and you need something flexible. Mm -hmm. The two uh, materials really bond well together. And it's yeah. just regular PLA and, and Ninja Flex, right? Is it semi flex or, or? No, so this is the original uh, Ninja Flex, so the more rubbery okay. uh, Ninja more Flex. Flexible. Yeah, Ninja so it's flex. more flexible and it has that rubber Cute. grip. Uh, characteristic, so it's able to hold on to the um, the brush handle. Cool. Better. So All right. Check that out if you are in the need of, uh, especially right now with Halloween. Um, Brandy has been doing a lot of makeup. Yeah. <laughs> So she's been doing like all of the Sanders since She's on the borderline of like doing cosplay, yeah. which is great. <laughs> hey, look, uh, Jim just said in, uh, in Cura, expert mode, support distance uh, Z millimeter sets I the support air gap. I will make sure that I put Thank that you so much, guide. Jim. Yeah. Copy. Cool. No offense was taken, Brandon. We're, we're just, uh, you know, we, we looked it up on, on Wiki. We're like, okay, cool. But if you probably look deep, you know, there's, there's all yeah, sorts I mean, of Yeah, I mean, all the projects and all can always be modified. So you can either... Um, Maybe there are UV LEDs not add, that, uh, that yeah, yeah. output more, uh, a shorter wavelength. Yeah, yeah. So you can always, like, modify the design to either include parts that we use or not. Yeah. Like, for the PowerBoost uh, 1000C that we had in there, you don't actually need to add that if you're not using it as a portable... Yeah. Um, you know, a little portable... Uh, all in one unit. You can yeah, just can use a little the USB wall. breakout unit as well, and it drops the price, you know, thirty dollars. So that's really good. You can, I believe, it's like five bucks maybe for cool. a little breakout from yeah. the USB, and that's all you need to use if you're just going to plug it into the wall. So there are always um, different ways you can um, right. adjust our models and our projects. Yeah, I mean, this is sort of inspiration inspired too by uh, Becky's idea too, the UV lamp cure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because she uses it to cure the, um, it worked for her the UV gel. Her um, nails. Yeah. The nails, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I still like the idea of trying with the Petri dish. It might just be an utter failure, but I don't know. <laughs> I like that idea of like, getting live bacteria. That'd be a nice little time lapse. Yeah. yeah, we'll get some earwax and we'll put it in the, in the Petri <laughs> dish and then we'll see if it, the UVs kill it or not. Yeah. Maybe it'll take a month. We don't know. <laughs> cool. Oh, thank you for the hearts, uh, Brandon. We love you too. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, next up, uh, do you, we want to rush through this a little bit because I want to get Simon in here. So what do you want to do? Labor layer? Yeah, so you had a really cool labor layer this week. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I like the... Thank you guys for the comments on it. Um, this was a live labor layer. And where is it? There it is. Nope, the wrong one over here. Cool. So check this out if you haven't already. If you're interested in uh, uh, adaptive designs, creating adaptive designs, understanding the concept of uh, bottom top, bottom up design, designing, in Fusion 360, uh, check this out. It's pretty cool. It's not just about modeling a hammer. It's more about uh, behaviors of, of uh, modeling uh, with uh, referenced sketches in mind. So with this design, I haven't really made a design like this where if I adjust the, the length of, let's say, the rod or the handle, all of the geometry update with that, which is really cool. A lot of the times if I were to update something, a lot of the features break because they're not linked, they're not referencing uh, each other. So with this design, although it's very simple, uh, it, really show, it really showcases how Fusion's powerful enough to, uh, to, to make adaptive designs. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so uh, check that out if you haven't already. Uh, it's in uh, the Lair by Lair playlist. I'll have a link below as well after the show. But yeah, check that out. Um, it's a quick 18-minute. People seem to like it. And there's also a tip in there on using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle to drastically reduce the print time, which is very, very cool. So if you're ever looking at a, a way to print something big that doesn't have a lot of detail, uh, consider getting yourself a nozzle kit for your 3D printer so you can print bigger things much yeah. faster. Yeah. And I really like that um, even, we're, even though we're using a bigger nozzle and a larger layer height, it still looks like it know, looks fine. 0.2 millimeter layer height to me mm -hmm. because of the thickness that yeah. we're using on it. Because it's so simple, like I'm not going to do any finishing techniques. Yeah. I printed it in gold PLA, so I don't have to paint it or nothing. Yeah. I'm ready to go. So yep. I like that. Cool. All right, that's that. Next up, Shop Talk. Guess what, guys? There is there's some new, new newness. <laughs> I don't know how else to like say it. If you go to Ultimaker.com, there's something cooking in, in Ultimaker. I wonder what it is. 
I think it's a new 3D printer. We're not like look, we're not we can't confirm no deny that there is a new Ultimaker printer or that we have it and that we've been testing it. We can't say that. We can't we can't confirm it and we can't deny it. So all we can say is that if you go to the Ultimaker website, they have this part and they have a little video. So this part was printed with some sort of new Ultimaker. And if you look at the part, it's it's very peculiar because it's like, how do they achieve this? In order to print something with this much overhang at this quality, you really have to have something here. So watch the video. They have five days until uh, they, they announce it. And they have like one frame. Can we freeze frame there? Let me freeze frame. Right. Ah. No, just that looks like a glitch to me. It, it, it could like be a be. glitch. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It says the new made by. So there's a lot of speculation here. What do you guys think? I want to hear what you guys think. The hammer looks weird. <laughs> oh, because of the way they tame. Oh, yeah. It's weird yeah. hammer. Cool. What do you think about the Ultimaker? Is there a new? I don't know. So wait, I tried to get footage, but I couldn't get my lens the, to Oh, do you want to show this? What is this? That. Yeah, but we got... Uh, there's something going on There's something on here. going on here. What is this video? So this we is, didn't uh, we obtained this we didn't film this we obtained this uh, this is a uh, it's like it's like Bigfoot like I swear he's real <laughs> I have a blurry video of this printer it might be real Kirby says it's ice cream frosting extruder so this was a uh, shot with a yeah. 1.2 I like that. f stop on a uh, 50 millimeter lens yeah yeah I think the ISO dropped down all the way to 100 yeah. so you can get a, a nice I think there's a bit of red uh, what's the red all about I don't know. <laughs> It's probably just a regular Ultimaker 2 and just like <laughs> blur like, hey, look, it's new. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't confirm no deny. I'm sorry. But tune in uh, on the 18th, I think. Uh, yeah, October 18th, words. there's some new stuff coming. So. so that should be cool. So definitely check that out in other 3D printing news. Yeah. Another 3D printer. There is an update to the firmware to the Sigma from BCN3D. These guys are here. So if you go to the website and click on the home page, there's a, a, there's a little picture that says that there's a new firmware available for the Sigma BC. And this came out uh, earlier or later in September. So it's a couple of weeks, maybe a week old or so. Think, yeah, two weeks ago or something. But like hey, I, look. I totally missed this one, which. Um, well, we were at Maker Faire. So. Yeah, that too. So the CEO like, uh, messaged me, like, hey, did you check this out yet? Did you check like, this what? out? So no. this, what, I'm, what we're looking at is screenshots of the new. Ma oh, and they did a video too? Yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. Uh, did you get the footage on there for me? Just I did. Do you want to see the footage? Yeah. Pedro's got some footage of him updating it. So the one thing that they didn't mention is that you need to format your card to uh, a FAT16. Which you know, this day and age is like, uh, a fat sixteen. Yeah, the format of the card. I've heard of fat thirty two. I didn't. Which know I was... couldn't do on the Mac. I had to switch over to the PC to do that, which took me like an entire night to figure out. But once <laughs> it was on there, the uh, they did a really good job of this. Um, as you can see from the intro there, it's not a monochrome screen. No, I thought it was. It's, no, it's uh, full color. It's full color, and um, they did a really nice job on the UI. And this looks great. The UX of it. Yeah. And you can do um, your nylon assisted cleaning. You can do um, you can the, move your Z around. This is the only 3D pausing. printer that we have that has a, a nice large touch screen. Like mm -hmm. we have some screens, but none of them are touch. Uh, my favorite right it's here great. is doing the purging. You Look can select which extruder you want to heat up now instead of having both and then having to like having to push it down. Push down on the other yeah. ones. Great so UX. This is awesome. Uh, so they have a, a nice assortment of really cool features on there. A um, little weird for having the little hamburger icon, you know, the... the it's um, hamburgers. Uh, it's the back button instead of, like, you know, usually... Oh, in I understand. The, no, in the UI no. world, that's for, like, you know, a contextual menu. Mm. But um, I think really it works fine. Yeah. Oh, so, cool. uh, Where's a happy, smiling extruder? I think it's where, uh, if you go back into oh. the, to the uh, website, you can see that there. But yeah, they did a nice job of doing time estimations for each file, so that's really cool. When you click into a file, you okay. can pause print. You have a lot more options of uh, adjusting the settings for it. So um, yeah, like right there, you can see it's going to take about four hours. Of <laughs> I print. like the upside down uh, question mark. That's very Spanish. Oh, I know, Which right? Yeah, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> cool. And yeah, if we're ever in Barcelona, we will definitely stop by the shop. Um, our firmware developer is actually in 
Um, oh, Ke Kevin Townsend? Yeah, he's actually in uh, Spain, Barcelona. Barcelona so cool, so you can check him out. Maybe we'll check him out, shoot a video. Um, he has a lot of fancy cameras over yeah. there, so maybe shoot a video. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Cool. All I'll right. Really check that out if you have a BCN 3D. Um, get that update. It's uh, really cool. And he did tip me off. There is another update coming later in the year, which is even going to be um, a lot more cooler. A lot more cooler? Yeah, that's what he was saying. Oh man. They've already made cool. it cooler. I really right, like cool. their design on the... The UI stuff, their icon, icon, what is it? Iconic icons, <laughs> iconography, iconography. So, oh, Chicago. Kirby thinks it's a toaster. Yeah, it could be a toaster. <laughs> they made a new toaster. Cyclone controlled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for shop talk, huh? I'm gonna call Simon. Get ready, Simon. There's a little lag, so. Uh, we need headphones. All right, cool. So we're going to jump over to this week's segment, which is a um, our first like guests were last or two weeks ago before the hurricane. Um, we had like a lot of the Adafruit staff um, in the office, so we just had everybody on there that did anything to do with 3D printing. This week we got um, a different guest. Uh, everybody might have seen the very cool hello hello Lucio um, gun that Simon has worked on. Is this working? I think it's see. working. So we can call him in. Hello? <laughs> see if this works. Yeah. Hang tight, folks. We're, we're dialing up. <laughs> I'll leave this open. And here. if this is a success, we'll uh, start doing more. Yeah, there's a lot of people I'd like though. to bring on the show. Yeah. So this might be a start of something uh, new. It's not working. Is the call working? Can you do tweets and yeah, like, yeah. talk to the chats? <laughs> this is called dead air time. <laughs> He's like, no, you're not calling. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's going to call me then. All right, cool. It's coming in. Up, oh. hey! Hello. Welcome to the show, Simon. Here, here. Let me switch to the screen. All right, we're very bright and overblown, but there we go. Yep. Fix it. Cool. Welcome to the show, Simon. How you doing, man? Oh, thank you. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, it's been a uh, really busy weeks. I'm sure. I'm and sure. Seen that uh, the gun has been blowing up all over the internet. It was like yeah, on the front so page of Reddit. So for those of you who don't know, I don't know how you don't know. How do you miss this? But uh, Simon uh, does a lot of cosplay props, and his latest project is the gun, Lucio's gun, from the game Overwatch. Wow, This thing, thing is all 3D printed. It's massive. A lot of post-processing techniques. It weighs a kilogram. <laughs> so it's, it's huge. It feels really beefy. It is a BFG. It is a big <laughs> yeah. effing gun. Very yeah, cool. yeah. It was right. really, really, really impressive project and I'm really happy how, how it turned off. I mean, uh, a lot of people are loving and enjoying the gun and, yeah. Uh, <coughs> and yeah, it's going viral. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. on Reddit, I was in first page of Overwatch uh, with over 1,700 uh, up uh, vote. Uh, yesterday I was trending on uh, Yemeji Gur, uh, then uh, yeah, the video on the Facebook received I think over 24,000 views, uh, on YouTube I'm around 30,000, so it's going great. Uh. No, this is great. I'm actually, I have the, your Facebook page pulled up. So if folks want to see it and follow your work, uh, we got you on Facebook. So you can check this out. I'll have the link below. And the video on YouTube is on your YouTube channel. So you kind of keep your same uh, username, handle, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of the same F-N-T-S-M-N. -N. I know, isn't, isn't that funny how the sticks stays? Mm-hmm. 
Very cool. Cool. And I'm trying now to switch a bit, like uh, like now with the Lucho Gun, like starting the video, saying, "Okay, hi guys, I'm si Simone or Simon." Mm -hmm. uh, so people like start to have in mind like my real name. Uh, so right, when yeah. they meet me, they they can know they can just call me with my real name and not like with a username. It's really difficult oh, to yeah. pronounce. <laughs> it's all good. Cool. Okay. And if folks, if you guys actually want to 3D print one yourself, the way to do it is to actually support Simon on Patreon. So yeah. I have the Patreon page uh, over here. So there you go. And this is really cool because uh, a lot of the times um, it's very difficult for a designer to kind of, you know, make money off their designs, uh, keep kind of get their credit for, for it because it's, it's kind of like the wild, wild west. As soon as you upload something, it's very difficult to keep control of it. So this is one way, if you're a designer, you know, this is one way to go. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh, I said audio back now. Uh, hmm. Let me see his... Hello? Hey, did you test your mic? Hello, hello? Say something, Simon? No, Kirby's saying that it came back. Huh. Hmm. Uh, oh, I know what it is. It's when I, s it's, it's when I switch. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably you overloaded. Uh, okay. uh, no, it, it's, it's something to do with uh, the, the... Sorry, guys. Sorry for that. You probably missed a lot of stuff, but uh, it's okay. Awesome. We're going to keep the shot here because that's only where the audio is coming through. Oh, for Simon, getcha. specifically. Ah, gotcha. So, okay. Uh, basically, we were talking about your Patreon, your Facebook, you're also on Instagram, so I'll have all those yeah, links yeah, below. Yeah. yeah, I'm really active on all the social, and I always the way I like to work and the way like I like to interact with the people is like I always up like to reply to everyone. Of course, sometimes can take more time because sometimes I receive a lot of uh, messaging or like requests. Uh, but the way until I will be able to like. Uh, have like this kind of contact with the people are like like in my work sense and uh, support me. I will, the idea is always be like uh, able to do like a kind of one to one with people. So like if they have some issue or some problem question, I can like help them because anyway, I'm working for like quite a while now with 3D printings and 3D designing. So I'm quite I would say I'm quite experienced in this field, and uh, yeah, it's it's just. It's just incredible. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's blowing uh, every project that I'm doing now are always more like important and big and receiving more attention. And like uh, I would say, little spoiler tomorrow to uh, uh, Blizzard should uh, uh, share my video. Nice. Uh, That's great. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really incredible and really like. It's happening really fast, and it's really cool. No, I love it that Blizzard's like one of those companies that appreciate when fan they appreciate their fans when they make stuff from their their uh, their games. Mm -hmm. They're not like coming at you saying, "Hey, don't uh, don't do this." They yeah. it's it's very in the backwards. They're very sort of open about this, mm -hmm. and they encourage it. So it's really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, anyway, they use kind, we can say we kind of uh, do advertising uh, uh, f uh, me for them and them for me. Yeah. Because you know, I mean, I spend uh, a lot of hours and days. I mean, if you commission something like this, it will cost a lot of money because it's like, I, it took me like around eight days for do like a full like really detail, uh, split the gun in parts, uh, uh, thinking about it and everything. And then we are speaking of 80 hours of print uh, mm -hmm. uh, plus material. Plus, uh, all the post processing is like huge. It's like I would say full seven days or something like that. Just oh because God. when you need to post process like props, is like the you need eighty percent of the time is like sanding because you need to remove the layer and you want like a really nice surface to paint on top. So you always try to sand and fix some little issue and problem. I mean, I'm not a post processing guy, so it's not like my main focus. So probably for me, it will take a bit more than like people are like experienced in this field. But anyway, take time and uh, and 
people should pay for that like time so mm -hmm. it's like really cool the way we are interacting they found me when i did the uh, tracer gun uh, and uh, we start to kind of collaboration like keeping them always like updated with what i'm doing if i'm doing something from uh, their uh, games i can send to them like a message so if they like it or something like that we can like speak if they want like post it somewhere and uh, yeah it's cool and then like uh, i send i send a package to them with uh, a lot of the creation i did uh, with 3d printing so the guy yes. i'm in contact with them uh, they have like all my stuff on their desk there uh, and, cool. <laughs> very cool what i like about what you're doing though is that there's a lot of cosplayers or there's more cosplayers that are using 3d printing but integrating electronics is something that's not just difficult but it really adds that extra value that extra dimension to your cosplay props so with yeah. this one, how did you approach it? Did you think about I'm gonna? Did you think about electronics first, or did you make the model first and then think about electronics? Uh, usually depends. Like for this, like for Lucho gun, and uh, I think it was yeah the same for the tracer gun. Uh, I make the model and then uh, like for the Lucho gun, I post the render of the model on my social, read it another part, other place, and people come out. Everyone was like, "Oh, it would be amazing if you can put real speaker." I was. <laughs> ah, crap. So, okay. Yeah. I say, yeah, it will be like amazing. So I say, okay, I can spend a bit more time, do some tests or fitting parts and stuff, and then uh, I contact you guys and we figure out like a way to collaborate mm -hmm. again. And you send me some of the electronics, and I did my fitting tests and everything, and then I include the electronics parts. Cool. It's like the electronics parts too is not like my field. I mean, I I can build circuit, but it's like really difficult for me like uh, understand all the parts of the electronics how it works stuff. Uh, but it was really easy. I followed the guide you made uh, about a similar project, and I just went like in a makerspace uh, and uh, to be a bit more professional with all the tools and everything. So mm -hmm. Like a clean desk, and I did all the recording and uh, uh, the soldering. Uh, it came out. It was quite quite easy to be honest. Put uh, the electronics oh, okay. all together. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, that's sort of the main thing we try to do here. Is to it, it is kind of uh, difficult at some times, but mm -hmm. if you have uh, you know if you have instructions and you have projects to base yep. things off of, it makes it really easy for uh, newcomers to do it. Because you know we weren't experienced yeah. at all either before we joined Adafruit, yeah. and having that the learning system really helps. Because yeah, uh, a lot of the a lot of people you can build on top of or change around. Exactly. Yeah, like everything can be in a yeah. remix. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's for that reason I'm doing it at the same time. Uh, usually, I always try to explain everything I do during my video. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, explain ste step by step what uh, material I use, uh, what they do. Uh, usually, now I'm starting to put all the links in the description to like the guide on Adafruit, all the all the uh, circuit I use from Adafruit, or like the, all the tools I use for post processing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. people can just go on the description if they want to do something similar. Uh, they can just click on all the links and find uh, all the stuff they need for their project. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, pretty much is like I learn from the community. I learn a lot of stuff from the community. At the same time, I want to give back a lot from the uh, at the community. So, like, all all the the process and stuff, how I make it, I'm always more than happy to like explain and try to help people. Then, of course, now I. Uh, I switch from release all my files for free to kind of receive a support from the people who really like my work because take a lot of time and I had a big issue with people stalling my design and reselling them. So I just decided to stop it and be able to kind of co control and check who is downloading what and he will use it just for personal use. Yeah, no, it's a smart way to approach it, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want... Uh uh, just the community to kind of well, there, there's there's people that are nice that credit you, and there's yeah, other people yeah, that yeah. just yeah. don't. They you know they don't want to do that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and then the things is like uh, I share like everything I do on Patreon. So the way is like uh, I try to figure out like the best price possible, and uh, pretty much like for design is like free perks. It's like the super basic one, like really easy design, like five dollars per month. Yeah, that's uh, great. Man. The the medium is like fifteen, and uh, with thirty five dollar you can have access to all my design. And this is not like something like it's like pretty much all the library, all the stuff that's I'm great, doing. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like. Uh, 
it's like you don't need every time like come and buy from me like a design I'm making but it's like you know it's that support you feel like okay they appreciate my work they can they can make it then for free without spending so much money to like uh, commission a design or something like that uh, and be able always to have access to something like uh, like update and something cool and new. At the same time, I try to like reach some uh, certain goal. Like uh, I think I put one like seven hundred and fifty dollars. I will start to like every people would be able like to ask about some particular design to be made, and I will do like a kind of of straw poll. So the one with more vote, I will work on it and then release again on Patreon. So I'm trying like to engage more and more yeah. with the people and uh, give back something to everyone. Cool. Well yes. said. Okay. Let's talk more about the gun. I have a couple questions yeah. here. Yeah. Um, so one question I had is about, so I do a lot of, we do a lot of 3D printing too, and one of the problems that we, we still come up with is iteration, tolerances. What kind of issues did you come up with uh, when printing? Because yeah. sometimes when you print it, you know, the first one doesn't work. <laughs> it's like I have to go yeah, back. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah, kind yeah. of problems did you come up with? Yeah, or? I would say one of the yeah big challenges like yeah tolerance for sure uh, depends from each printer. I usually learn uh, if you use a tolerance of 0.3, should be works with every printer. Then like with Ultimaker, you can go a bit lower. Yeah. Uh, but usually I always try to keep it 0.3. So when I release the file, everyone do doesn't depend from what printer they have. They can make it work. Uh, about like fitting, uh, I, I did a different test about the side uh, panel of the gun, where was the speakers, so yeah. I can test that the speaker was working really well. And uh, yeah, and then uh, sometime up and I try to edit a bit the design, uh, keeping like the actual shape, but maybe changing like like small things they will like improve the printing for the supports because I always try to try to like have uh, less support possible on my parts of course sometimes it's really difficult because some shapes are really tricky mm -hmm. uh, because anyway you know is supports require material require time uh, and require then the post processing so if you can uh, avoid uh, to have support in your parts it's something like uh, a plus Mm -hmm. can say. Oh, yeah, definitely. There is one trick that you made um, for making the detail, like the uh, the logo in the center of the gun. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah tell yeah, us about I that. Can. Yeah, so pretty much uh, the logo here inside the gun. I think so you can see it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you can see slightly. I split the frontal parts in four pieces. And I extrapolate the center part because I want the logo really high detail so people can see the actual logo. And uh, so I, uh, I, yeah, I put together the four parts and then I have this uh, center, we can say half circle or uh, half mm -hmm. uh, balls, uh, it lock all the pieces together. And I print that separate because I want to print it like 0 0.1 uh, millimeter height to have like a really nice logo. And then uh, I, all the other parts I print them in 0 0.25. So he, so he pretty much like speed up the process for the gun, but the actual logo, the one I'm really care about it, I was able to print it like separately with the different settings. Cool. All right. Did you use uh, like the bigger nozzles on the Ultimaker to to print them? I need to test it. Uh, I tested with one piece. It came out well, uh, okay. but yeah, it was quite rushing because it mm -hmm. was something uh, I want okay. uh, out quite quickly. Okay. Uh, so I didn't use it before. So I was yep. mm, maybe it's better uh, if okay. I use the 0 0.4 yeah. than in case okay. I will test it and change it. Yeah, I, I should start to use the 0 0.8 for these big props. Oh, yeah, damn, I just need to understand. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's, it's I, I should yeah. like understand about like maybe the the detail how they come out. Of course, mm -hmm. you lose something in the detail, oh, yeah, but yeah. if you uh, depends like when you post process this kind of uh, props, you you know send down everything. So maybe it, it can can works anyway. Cool. Now I know you you split everything, you modeled everything, and you split everything in Rhino. Uh, yeah. Did you do any special techniques to align everything back together? Uh, usually, uh, I split like uh, I designed the whole gun together, and then I split it in uh, the right position. I, I usually don't don't uh, change the position of the parts. 
So okay. I always yeah. try to keep that uh, in, uh, in, I think you can do something similar in uh, Fusion 360, you do like layer. Uh, so I like uh, move, uh, uh, usually I always like kind of backup some parts of the design. So if mm -hmm. I do something wrong or if I lose some parts, I can always come back because you, we doesn't have like the timeline like in uh, Fusion 360. Uh, so yeah. you, you cannot like go back, change a feature and all the stuff uh, when you come back where you was, they will change. So it's a bit more mess up. Uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, pretty much is, is I don't I don't uh, move my parts. Yeah. Okay, I meant more though on uh, like aligning them with the prints, like snapping them together. Did you use pins? Uh, Sometimes yeah. you use like popsicle sticks. What what was your yeah, approach? Yeah, I, I I always use pin for the okay. just like okay. little pin depends. Yeah, and you uh, print the pins, right? You print the pins. Or yeah, you? yeah, I print okay. the pins just just because like I don't want to buy. Uh, how do you call it? The sticks. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the sticks. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can uh, introduce different things. Like when I was building this gun, yeah, I didn't mention this. Uh, I was thinking to put like inside the steel road because I usually oh, always yeah. like, use steel road or like tread the road because they are really like, um, they are not, the weight is really low and they are kind of more resistant than like just normal uh, uh, pins. Uh, I always use it when I do like big props like sword or mm, like big yeah. gun. Uh, this one was like not that big like the other props, but I, wa I was thinking to put some rods just you know, it's, it's heavy, so yeah. it could maybe break, but uh, then it wasn't working really well, so I just decided to glue the parts together, and uh, the epoxy glue works perfectly, put together all the, the parts, and they stay really well together. And the thing is, I use these techniques of uh, putting the epoxy, uh, leaving some spot free, where you put uh, super glue, uh, you can use an accelerator or something, or mm. just put the parts together. So what will happen is uh, the super glue keep together the parts, and uh, let the time uh, to the epoxy to dry. So you if you if you like knock the door the not the door sorry, the parts uh, during the process, uh, the piece will not move, and uh, the epoxy will have the right time to really like melt together the two parts. Mm -hmm. That's a good tip. Yeah. Cool. Let me see what other questions do we have. Do, 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 do. Support material. We already talked about that. And you use the Ultimaker 2 Plus uh, with PLA yeah. material. To, uh, yeah, I use uh, yeah Ultimaker 2 Plus. Uh, it was an Ultimaker 2. I upgraded with the kit, and then I use uh, dark gray PLA from from Futura, and uh, it works really well. I'm really happy. I'm using their filaments for a long time, and awesome. I didn't have any issues, so I'm really happy. And they they are really fine guys, and they support my channel too. So I'm more than happy to collaborate with like company. They they're yeah. happy and they like want to involve me in more projects. That's cool. It's like you're. It's like like Simon's a race car driver, and he has like a gasoline sponsor, <laughs> so he gets the full yeah. up. And race. That's pretty <laughs> cool. No, yeah, no, it's a great yeah, strategy. I think, great yeah, strategy. I, I think I think this is the best way. I mean. There are so many companies in the, every industry. I mean, it's not just in 3D printing. Mm. And if you find a way to collaborate with them, so you have something like they have something back from you and you have something back from them, is, I think, the best way. Of course, then can, uh, can happen someone like pay you for doing advertising. For now, it never happened for me. And to be honest, I will see when it will happen. I know other people in the 3D printing community is being paid to do some stuff. But you know the 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 important things for me is like be always like say what you think without be like influenced to mm -hmm. like okay this company sent me something so I need to speak uh, good about them. I mean I work with a lot of company they send me some stuff and I don't review them at the moment when I receive the product because I'm not happy about the product. Yeah. So I try to work with the company to improve the product and when I feel like happy with the product I'm more than happy to like review and use that product and uh, and of course like do a video where I say okay they sent me the, this product it wasn't working for this reason but there was so nice and cool guys they work with me to improve their product. Cool. That's a good point. Um, a lot of uh, products have come through here, and you know, we'll post about it, and then people never hear about it again. It's because it didn't work out, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, if it doesn't work yeah. out, yeah, it, it yeah. doesn't make or sense. It, to if it wasn't it. any good, and <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I think it, is, it doesn't make too much sense. Like, do like bad review. You put yeah, in a yeah. bad position yourself with the company, and mm. uh, the company will uh, receive probably problems. Less people yeah. will buy their product. Yeah. So it's just matter like you can work with company. They they for sure are more than interested to like improve their product, yeah. uh, and they, if people with more knowledge and be like expert people in the field can help them. It's like something I I at least notice different company are really happy to work. Cool. All right. Let's take some questions from the YouTube chat. Pedro, do you have anything? We're gonna just uh, kind of. Kirby was asking where you could get the model, and it's out of Patreon. Yeah, you can check yeah. it out on Patreon. I'll have a link below. Yeah, you find all the model. I released the model uh, with the space for the electronics, the model without the electronics, and the small the, the small model. Oh, cool, right. oh, the, uh, yeah. So they can print the like the small version is this one, cool. like a small version of it. <laughs> uh, Brandon was saying that documentation is always way harder than the design. It's true. <laughs> documentation. Oh yeah, like like I'm sure making the video uh, kind of added time to. If you didn't make a video, that's always the case, right? Yeah, because you have. Uh, yeah, sorry. Can you can you repeat that again? Yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. received a message from Blizzard. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I was asking hey. for some stuff. <laughs> We're gonna have to. Okay. No, the question was just like, uh, isn't it very difficult to also document? So when you did the video, it took even longer to make the print because you had to make sure to set up the camera, mm -hmm. you had to make sure to record, you had to make sure. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, the the things is. Uh, I want to give back to the community because I receive stuff from the community. So I spend that hours and hours more to be able to set uh, the camera and then, of course, edit Editing, all this stuff. Because yeah. I mean, edit all the time lapse, edit all the video, all oh the show. God, yeah. I mean, uh, probably half of the video I made, I didn't use it because it's like the moment when you are in the process. You don't understand if you really actually need that shot or yep. not. If yep. it, the the video become too long or, or mm -hmm. it's too short, so I always try to like over exaggerate about what I'm recording about my process, and That's then after tip. try to figure out the best way to put all the parts together. That's a good yeah. tip. I think the comment that um, like the electronics people always get is like, oh, I could solder th that soldering job is so bad, but what they don't understand is there's a camera problems. right here, and you're like. Yeah, uh, you know, not trying to get your hand <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's hard to it's do. It's always that. harder to solder on camera. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really tricky. It's really tricky. It's really uh, tricky things. Uh -huh. But you know, I think you think so the same way. It's always good, like, give back to the community and see other people make something you make, uh, big, uh, and they they are making something you make big because they saw you. Yeah. So okay. it's cool. Okay. People saying uh, more questions. Uh, just comments saying uh, well, some people that aren't too much of a fans for the DRMing. Uh, he calls it hobby projects, but in this term, it's more you know it's more than a hobby. It's, no, you do like, this full time, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I'm, uh, I'm design full time. Yes, and the um, the thing people uh, don't always encounter if they don't um, usually or all the time make. Like projects like this, the the things they may not, may not have encountered is like other you know quote unquote companies using your designs to you know say that they can do services when in fact it's like a lie. They're just you know using all your designs to try to you know promote sell it or promote their or products. Their and that's yeah. that's the 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 biggest reason why a lot of people um, do the, go to the Patreon route because of yeah. that. Where we've seen um, like a uh, with. Um, a lot of other people we've seen, you know, a company saying, "Oh yeah, we can design this," and they're using somebody else's work, which is, you know, totally not cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a really tricky field, but uh, yeah, it's not it's not hobby. I mean, uh, uh, I always release before stuff for free, so for a long time, and, and uh, people and always use my stuff. So I just decide to switch in this way, just because I want to protect my work because yeah. people don't credit so. Uh, or just few of them always credit. So uh, I'm more than happy in this way to don't see too many people print my stuff, but just some of them and uh, and be like, you know, you are supporting me. So if you have like 
problem with some print or you want like a little mm -hmm. edit in some file, uh, I'm more than happy like to work and do it uh, for free because you are supporting me on Patreon. Of course, then if you like ask for a commission, like a specific design, I can give a quote is, is my job. So it's what I do like daily. Yeah. So like, I, I have I have different people come to me for asking for my design. So I design under commission for different like people or company. Cool. And right. actually the person who said that is saying, oh, you're full time. I need to find your Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That's I cool. have the link here. <laughs> yeah, the link cool. is in the uh, description. So yeah, that's the, um, and it's not like you're not giving back too. Even if you don't give away the file, you're giving away, you know, the knowledge and the how to do it. Yeah. The techniques yeah, yeah. that you use. I, so I mean, the, the, idea, the idea for me is like be able to release every month a big props. Uh, so because each props, I would say design wise, uh, is our average from five to de ten days to design, yeah. uh, and uh, and then plus like some little like uh, medium and little projects. So like if mm -hmm. someone from my YouTube of Patreon have some kind of idea, they can just like say, oh, would be cool if you do this. I can like have a look and see like okay, this model will take me four or five hours to make it uh, so uh, I can say yeah okay no problem I can make it and then post it on Patreon I mean uh, I don't need like to print everything I make because anyway I'm pretty much at that point where when I design I know if something will work or not of course if I see like something's like a bit tricky I always try to test it before release it because uh, I usually like release my file already in the position. I prefer to print them and uh, slice it and everything. So like the people just take it and print it. Like oh. try to like make everything like easier possible. Cool, that's great. You're also doing a giveaway, right? Yeah, of the three mini guns three of mini the guns. Lucho gun. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's something I like to do. You know, when <laughs> when you like uh, be able like to collaborate with big brand, uh, you can like have like uh, some like more spool or something like that. So I always like try to give back. Like I did the same for the Shuriken from Genji, mm -hmm. always from Overwatch. Yeah. So when I can I have the time and I have a bit like the time my printer are like free, I can like do this kind of giveaway for me. It's like I don't the actual like. Uh, uh, Money I spend is for the shipping, but mm -hmm. it's fine. It's something I can like uh, make it happen with, with no problems. It's a marketing expense at that point. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, YouTube, uh, all these kind of things is like advertising yourself, ad ad advertising what you are doing, and uh, and yeah, and uh, is is can be like quite cheap with social networks if you know how to use them. Mm-hmm. Cool. No, I like how you use social network. That's actually how we met. Nice, as we saw you on uh, Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Cool. So the way to enter, it's actually pretty easy. There's a link in your YouTube video, so you just click on that. Yeah. And then yeah, you, yeah, the uh, you click here to subscribe, I believe. Yeah, yeah. The only things required is the subscribe, uh, and then if some people want like to follow on other social, follow oh, the, okay. my company social and stuff, they can do it and have like uh, uh, entry more. But it's not required, so it's like it's like uh, okay, if you're a subscriber for me, you can win the gun. Cool. So. And there's seven days left. Uh, yes. Yeah, sh yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be something like that. Oh. Wow. What the. 1,400 entries, <laughs> a lot of people entering, cool. And how does it work, it yeah. randomly picks someone? Yeah, 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 when it's ended, you can just go and pick uh, three people mm -hmm. random and okay. uh, they will give me all the detail. Uh, I mean, uh, no, they will give me the email and then I will send an email to each one to receive the uh, shipping detail. Cool. All right. All right. Well, I think that's all the questions. Yep. We're approaching the one hour mark, so I think, uh, I think we're good. Guys, if you have any questions, drop them now while we have Simon here. And again, of course, you can follow him on all the links that are going to be in the description, mm -hmm. Patreon, and all that will be there as well. Yep, yep. And yeah, um, I think we're going to be working on another co collaboration, so... Yeah, more we'll stuff <laughs> coming. Cool. All right, well, <laughs> um, I think it's going to be it. Thanks, Simon, so much for... No worries. Thank you to you guys. Yeah, I think this is really fun. Yeah, um, yeah cool. absolutely. All right. Any last uh, things? Thank any you. last things you want to say? Uh, thanks to everyone. Uh, see you around. I, I mean, was, you have I was, all my social stuff. So. Yeah, I was hoping you would say something about an eyebrow, maybe. Mm. Ah, yeah. That's like your. I like the. <laughs> I like the. Don't yeah, forget. Yeah, yeah. 
to raise right yeah now. exactly because because i thought because i saw i take inspiration from joe the tree printing that it was like it's like the same ending uh, so i always I like take the picture with the eyebrow raised and right. uh, i received <laughs> so many comments and so many like people joking about in the picture so i just keep it like my my hand in video now yeah <laughs> it's your calling card it's your signature the, the yeah. Raised eyebrow. yeah exactly it's the <laughs> that's cool all right man well cool thank you so much for for uh for coming on and we'll be in contact. All right, man. Yeah, I guess it's gonna be it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Other projects will come for sure. Cool. Awesome. All right, Simon. All right, thanks, buddy. Adios. Bye, bye. Alrighty. Well, we're gonna end the show too as well. Uh, one last thing we want to do, of course, if you want to pick up some stuff in the shop, you can do so and get ten percent off. That's right. Expires You'll be at eleven fifty nine p.m. tonight. That's right. You get all the lovely uh, projects, printers, and filament to build your next project. Cool. I'm glad this worked out. It was. I wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to with the internet and stuff. Yeah. I think the only thing was the uh, the audio cutting out when you yeah. switch scenes. Yeah. I forgot but I think about you that. could. You can edit that in there, right? To pipe the audio in when you change the scenes. Uh, not after the recording, but before. No, the no, no. Before. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a way to that. do it. So, so yeah. we'll figure it out. This is our first okay. time we've ever done anything like this with somebody. I mean, he's in London. So the yeah, timing is a little bit different. It's, yeah. four, it's fortunately 4 o'clock over there in his time, mm -hmm. but it worked out okay. Very cool, yeah. Cool. So I guess I uh, look forward to more uh, interviews and uh, special guests coming there up. There we go. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this one. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys. Good luck with all your maker projects. And like Paige said, remember to keep... <laughs> <laughs> see you next week, guys. <laughs> I hope we don't get sued.